Welcome back, compadres. I am Brandon Tolbert, and today we're talking engineering computing. More circle is one of the most fundamental aspects of mechanical and structural engineering. The information you get from Moore's circle can be used to determine whether a component will fail or not. You can get maximum principal stress, maximum shear stress, and minimum principal stress. Further, you can use the information from Moore's circle to confirm FEA software results. Now, if you're a mechanical engineer, you've probably drawn out plenty of these in your day. And it's pretty repeatable. Because it's a repeatable process, we can take advantage of this. We can program it. So today, I'm going to show you how to program an object-oriented program in Python to draw out more circle and determine the worst case stresses such as maximum principal, minimum principal, and maximum shear stress. In this program, we're going to use the graphical method to plot more circle. So this is easier than the stress transformation equations. So we're going to do it, do it that way. So guys, if you're not excited, man, I get amped up because this stuff I'm showing you is pretty cool. So let's get started. Today we're going to write an objective-oriented program to create more circle and return the worst case stresses which include the max principal, minimum principal, and maximum shear stress. So this is an example of more circle right here that we're going to output with the program today. You have shear stress plotted against normal stress. And so the important pieces of information you need from this graph are the worst case stresses, the minimum principal stress, the maximum principal stress, and the maximum shear stress. This line right here represents the current operating region or the current loads on a stress element. So this is a stress element to the right. So why is this line important? Well, stress is directional. What does that mean? That means as this element gets rotated at different orientations, there's going to be a different stress acting on it. And so that's what Moore's circle captures. It captures all the stresses this element sees as it rotates through a, an angle. So that's the importance of Moore's circle. So basically, we can take the current stress state and we can translate it to a different stress state, such as our worst case stresses. So the sign convention used in this analysis is shown here. This is the positive sign convention. And really all you need to know is that this is the positive X face right here. This is a positive Y face and this is a negative Y face. This is the positive this is a negative X face. And so if you look at this on a positive surface, if the shear stress points in a positive coordinate direction, in this case we're pointing in the positive Y direction, the shear stress is pointing in the positive Y direction positive surface positive direction equals a positive shear stress and so that's basically all you need to know because on this surface if you know it's positive on this surface well it's going to dictate the outcome of the others and the rest of these shear stresses will be positive for example on this negative x surface the shear stress vector points down in the negative y direction. So a negative times a negative, you can think of it like that, equals a positive. So these are positive shear stresses. But the only one you really need to worry about is this one. And the key concepts we're going to cover are UML diagrams. That's kind of the starting point of developing an object-oriented program. You need to start there. It makes the process a whole lot easier. So the equations we're applying are the more circle equations for the graphical method of Moore's circle. The graphical method is simpler than the stress transformation equations because you can actually see the geometry, relate it to geometry, and get the values you want. So the important values, or the only values you need for the graphical method are the normal stress on the x face, sigma x, the normal stress on the y face, sigma y, and the shear stress on the xy face. And on Moore's circle, on the y face, that shear stress is going to be the negative of the stress on the XY face. This doesn't mean it's a negative sign convention. Don't get that confused. But really, you can tell, um, I call it the more circle ABCs. Once you know those three values, you can use geometry, this triangle right here, to get all the values you need to calculate the worst case stresses. For example, you want to calculate the X component of this um, 
of this r vector I'm going to call it or the hypotenuse on this triangle so a is simply this equation right here it's going to be the normal stress on the x face minus the normal stress on the y face divided by 2 that gets you the x component right here the y component is simply just the shear stress on the xy face under its current loading state and then the center of the circle is simply going to equal the normal stress on the x face plus the normal stress on the y face divided by 2 and then you can calculate r using Pythagorean theorem which is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared and that's all you need guys now you can just find your worst case stresses your maximum principal stress by just taking the value at the center and adding the length of this r or of the hypotenuse that gets you the maximum principal stress similarly you can get the minimum principal stress by taking the center and subtracting the value of the hypotenuse and then the maximum shear stress because this is a circle centered about the x axis centered along the x axis it's simply just the maximum it's the maximum shear stress is equal to the value of the hypotenuse and the last thing I'm going to discuss here is basically for pot plotting more circle these equations are important so to plot this entire circle you have to take points at least in Python you do it based off of points so I'm going to take basically a theta at each value encompassing 0 to 360 degrees I'm going to convert that to radians using this conversion factor and I'm going to get a collection of points right here which is going to be equal to the center plus the r cosine theta so I do this at each point each theta value and then I find the corresponding y component simply by doing r times sine theta. If this doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. You code it one time, you'll understand it. So now you kind of know the equations we're going to use. Now we can begin to build our UML diagram. So if you recall, in this first box we have our parameters or inputs. And so this will be, we're going to need the stress on the x face sigma x, the stress on the y face sigma y, and the shear stress on the x face tau xy. And then we're going to need to initialize these parameters with a constructor. We'll initialize sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy in our constructor. And then the calculations or functions we're going to need to calculate these values are shown here in this last box. We're going to, be, we're going to need to calculate the circle center. We're going to need to calculate the radius or the hypotenuse of that triangle and then we can determine the max principal stress, minimum principal stress, maximum shear stress and then plot more circle. So those are the functions we're going to do. So guys let's go ahead and jump into Python and start writing this program. So what I've done guys is I've created a PyDev project and then created a PyDev module. If you don't know how to do this go to my first video on object oriented programming and you'll know how to do it. So what I pulled up here to the right is the UML diagram that was brainstormed earlier. And I'm going to use this diagram to help me code, build my code going forward. So from this diagram, I'm going to build a class called More Circle. Now I have to define my parameters and initialize them in a constructor. So right here, these two boxes is what I'm referencing next, what I'm going to code next. So let's do that. So how do you define a constructor? You use the def and then double underscore init. And then I'm going to have to pass in or initialize sigma x. If I can type sigma y and tau xy. So now we define our variables and initialize them. So we use the self statement sigma x equals sigma x self dot sigma y equals sigma and then autocomplete self dot tau I'm going to say tau xy equals tau xy. So if I made a mistake somewhere, 
you know, I basically I misspelled this. I can refactor it doing Alt Shift R, say yes, and I can spell it tau xy, and it should replace all those values with what I want, which it did. So that's just a little tip to work with Eclipse. So now we've we've defined our inputs and initialized them. Now we can go create our functions. So over here, this is our list of functions. I'm going to create the circle center first. So these are just the equations defined in the slide. And that's going to return um, self, don't forget self, self dot sigma x plus self dot sigma y divided by 2. And now I'm going to define the radius. So this is using the more circle ABCs. So A is equal to, this is using the graphical method, remember that. Sigma x minus self dot sigma y divided by 2. And b is equal to self dot tau xy. And then finally we return r, or the hypotenuse of that triangle we saw in the slide. a squared plus b squared to the one half. So that's the same as the square root, if you didn't know. And now we can write a function to determine our worst case stresses. So let's start with maximum principal stress. And that's simply just going to be returning self dot center circle, self dot center plus self dot radius. So I called the function values above it. I can do that. That's legal. And now we're going to do the minimum principal stress. And return self dot circle center minus self dot radius bang man there we have it man this is going quick now we can re determine our maximum shear stress return self dot radius okay now we gotta make the plot so like I said this is if you haven't ever plotted in Python it can be a little bit it may take a little bit of a learning curve to understand how it plots but as long as you think of it as an array of values array of x values and a corresponding array of y values it should make sense so that's how we're gonna approach it here so more circle plot if I can spell plot and so I'm going to define my 360 degrees right here. So I'm going to use a package called NumPy. And I forgot to define that up here, but I'm going to go ahead and define the package I'm going to use. So I'm going to import NumPy as MP. This is just an abbreviation, shortened abbreviation for NumPy. MP is. So I can use this MP instead of typing out NumPy each time. So I'm going to define an array of values. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to go to 360. And I'm going to define 361 points. That will basically encompass 0 to 360 degrees in 1 point increments. I don't need the rest of this. 
and then I'm going to convert this to radians. So this is a an array of values. Now I got to convert this to radians by applying a conversion factor. So I'm going to multiply it by 2 times pi radians divided by 360 degrees. That's our conversion factor. And then I'm going to calculate my x values of the circle. I'm going to call it sigma points equals self dot circle center. This equations are in the slides plus self dot radius. And then I'm going to multiply that by the array of values cosine of radians. And that will give me my points on the circle x points. Now I got to calculate my y points. So I'm going to call these tau points. So it's going to be, um, it's actually going to be self dot radius times, sorry, I'm thinking, uh, sine of radians. There we go. So bang, we have our x and y values for our circle. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to plot these. So how do you plot? Well, let's see here. So what I'm going to do is just, so you use matplotlib to plot things. So we have to go up here and define another package. So I'm going to import matplotlib dot pi plot as PLT. So I shortened the abbreviation there. Now I can go use that package. So I'm going to define the figure. And I'm going to make it, so I'm going to define the figure size to make it square so that the circle looks like a circle and not an ellipse. So gonna do this make it five I can't remember the units I think it's five inches tall and five inches wide we'll find out and then I'm going to plot this so I'm going to plot the x values first Sigma points comma tau points and I'm gonna that's how I'm going to leave it for now, just to, to quickly run through this. You can go look at what inputs this, this function uh, can have. And then I'm going to put a title. You call it more circle. And then I'm going to define the X label as so what you want to do um, to make sigma you have to use latex notation and include the R in front of that so um, I'm just gonna show you it right here you can go look that up and I got to put these things in dollar signs right there and then plt dot I'm just gonna copy this paste it below make sure my code is aligned otherwise it won't run change that to Y label and then change this to tau so that should basically get us what we want and then I'm going to create a grid here. And I don't need those parameters. That way we can see what our values are. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot this. So once I've created a figure, I can plot this figure by saying plt.show. And so let's see 
So we have our code written. Now we can go create a new package and test this thing out. So what I'm going to do here is create a new module. Call it create a new module in this package and call it test mores circle so that's an empty module so let me go see what I can do here so x equals let's see what was our module named it was called or class name more circle more circle right there and so it takes sigma x sigma y so let's just take some random values negative 4 4 and 3 and then I'm gonna show the plot so let's see what we get here run this code and so I have an error here so that's not uncommon guys let me pause the video and I will show you after I get it working so guys it turned out it was a simple mistake um, in Python you don't use the caret to raise a value to a power you use double star and also I caught another minor mistake and so I will show you that here so that should be a double star and then up here I accidentally used the wrong equation sigma x plus sigma x divided by 2 that's not the circle center it's sigma plus sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 and so this needs to go out here and so bang so those are the two mistakes and so now let's retry this And check it out guys there's more circle right there bang and so what you have is you have your maximum principal stress right here your minimum principal stress and your maximum shear stress and so um, yeah these values make sense and um, I've tested this program and it works um, you can test it against a textbook it works and so let's go ahead and print out the maximum stress values to see what we get it shows it's five right here for the maximum principal stress and negative five for the minimum principal stress and then the maximum shear stress of five so let's see what we get so we're gonna print out x dot maximum principal stress And then we're going to print out the minimum principal stress and the maximum shear stress. I mean, the yes, maximum shear stress. Bang, let's see what we get. We get our plot again and then we have so let me print it in this mode so we can print it in our console and so I press run reproduces our plot and then as we're waiting here as okay so our maximum principal stress is 5 which is what we saw in the graph our minimum principal stress is negative 5 and our maximum principal stress is 5 our maximum shear stress is five so there we have it guys that's simple let me pause the video clean up some things make the graph a little bit cleaner and show you the re end result okay so this is the program right here I've used went back to my original program and I press play and check it out so you can clean up your plots nicely so for that s those stream same stress conditions this is my plot this is my operating condition it should have been at uh, basically negative four three 
and four three and so that's what you get guys right there bang so guys take advantage of this I hope you learned something and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and keep learning as always that's a wrap guys we have a program an object oriented program in Python to give us more circle and the worst case stresses off of more circle so if you like the video please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time adios